we're gonna explore the CSS and creativity and everything a bit more. We started with Yeva and we'll, we'll proceed with uh, Aga. And um, she works for Adobe and I'm, I'm actually stealing your presentation yeah, at the moment. because yeah. you've already read them. So oh, sorry. So bad. I'll just, uh, let's, let's, let, let's just go. Okay. Okay, so. Hello everyone, Privet. Uh, so I'm Aga. My full name is Agnieszka Naploha, but please say Aga because it's shorter and easier for you. Um, so as already Vadi said, I, I work at Adobe where I'm designer and coder. So CSS is a natural language for me because it perfectly combines the world of code and the world of aesthetics and design. And I have to confess something to you uh, that whenever I attend tech conferences for developers, I always said that I'm a designer. And whenever I attend designer conferences, I always said that I'm a coder. Um, and at CSS conference, I feel like at home, finally. So it's really fun. And I'm really excited um, that, um, th that I can be a part of this conference. And I have to tell that I'm so amazed by the whole concept, the badges, the posters, and everything. And I hope that you're excited um, as me. So congratulations for the organizers. Um, so what I do after work, um, I work also. I also organize organization which is called the Awesomes, and we do nonprofit courses teaching people HTML and CSS, um, and it's really fun. So if you'd like to do something for the community, I would love to share my experience. And, and as a fact fan, um, I used to learn Russian. So if you meet me somewhere after a break, uh, you can um, try to talk with me in Russian. It would be a great opportunity for me to hone my language skills. So uh, we are here today to, to listen about CSS. And the topic of my presentation is breaking the norm with creative CSS. And what does actually breaking the norm mean, uh, means uh, thinking about the web industry? Uh, or what is creative CSS? Eva already showed you amazing stuff, amazing artwork you can do. But is it always like that? Well, hopefully, we'll find the answer to these questions after my talk. But I would like to begin with a short story. So one day. I got a task, create a website. Because I'm a coder and designer, it should be super natural for me. But I had a problem at the very beginning. So um, I was stuck. I have no creative powers and no ideas. What should I do? So this simple task that should be natural actually became my huge problem. So what you do in such situation? Well, you try to look for the inspiration. And how do you do, how you do this? Probably you open different websites and start and, and waiting for the sudden glory and the moment when the creative juices are flowing. So this, what I, this is what I plan. I try to open the website that I visit daily and try to look at them with fresh eyes. So I saw PayPal page and the section like this and another one. And I also visited Trello. And this was the another section of this page. I also opened Evernote's page. Well, these are all the page um, gathered together. And my friend tried to be funny in this situation. Um, and she sent me this page. Well, it was to mean was, uh, it, it meant to be a joke, but actually it wasn't. And it was quite a sad thing because I realized that we're living in a 12 columns grid. Uh, put into three boxes. And well, does the word not know any other numbers or shapes? And I was quite depressed and I was wondering, well, uh, is it only me? Or maybe the whole web design world has fallen into boring state. Um, and it was quite dramatic time for me. And the funny fact was that I stumbled upon this article on the next web. Um, which states that web design might be over. So I started to think, well, maybe I should quit my job and find another thing to do. Um, because it seems that we like, kind of became the victims of the tools that we're using, thinking about Bootstrap right now, or Foundation, or the grid itself. And we think, I think that we like, have reached the stagnation point, and the like, unique layouts are lost art. But I decided not to give up and to take a deep breath uh, and abandon internet. So I tried to look for the inspiration offline. Yep, offline. I know it's quite strange for all of us. Uh, so the th first thing that, co that was closed at my hand were actually old-fashioned magazines that I got from a friend. Um, so I started flipping it through, and I realized that this is it. And the print that is by many people regarded as dead medium actually 
it's very inspiring and have very and has very uh, interesting um, ideas. So um, I realized that the presentation of articles and magazines is far far way different from what we can see on the web. Like the every article, the layout, the artwork, everything is carefully assembled to support the most important thing, the content. Um, and this is completely gone on the web because uh, when you let's see different articles on the blogs, they all look the same. We've got the hero banner at the top, hero image, probably taken from stock photos. Um, we've got the blocks of text and floated images, and this is only it. And I think that it gives us the sense that the whole web is very boring. But luckily, after my fasc fascination of the print, um, I was getting back to the online world, um, and I stumbled upon this website. So who has ever heard about Brutalist website? Raise your hands. Yeah, so it's not that bad. Um, so Brutalist website was the page that gathers all the crazy web, uh, all the crazy websites um, and showcase them. And I think that they're like web non-conformists doing amazing work, sometimes breaking the existing rules, forget about UX principles, which is sometimes very annoying uh, and kind of illegal on the web. Um, but at the same time, if you don't risk, you don't gain. And I really appreciate that they have courage. And I think that many designers and many developers really um, are inspired by, by, the, by their fresh approach. And another thing that I want to mention is blog that, su that supports this uh, alternative web design trend, which is called Hover States. So if you're tired of tribalization era and all the, you know, the same gradients, the same typography, you should visit this site uh, because it, um, it shows very cool sites that are not very popular, but I think they should be. So I was getting my passion for the web again. And if you're looking for the brands that are not afraid of experimentation, I think that you should check out Bloomberg. Um, I don't know whether you've seen this article. It's great, by the way. The content is amazing. But I also like what they did with the style and with the climate of this article. And I think it's, they're very courageous of doing this. Okay, but you're here to listen about CSS, not about my story or losing my uh, passion for web design. Um, so happily, we're in the CSS part. Um, and personally, I think that CSS can bridge the gap between print media that is very fascinating and the world of the web that is still quite new. So um, I've seen some inspirations on Pinterest, and I was really wondering whether we can do this on CSS. And the truth is that we've got so many new uh, CSS features that actually can make us abandoning the image software. And this is what Eva showed you, that you can actually paint with CSS. And I think that many things we can do without Photoshop, and this is very cool. Um, so I decided to challenge CSS and, and see what actually we can do with the code. And the first thing that I would like to mention is CSS Grid, and it was already mentioned here as well. Um, so Grid is already shipped to all the browsers, but if you haven't already used it, you should try it. And I know that it's hard to start from scratch and learn things uh, from the beginning, but I think that it's time to, to learn something new, and you know, it's kind of the, the life of a web developer or a designer. Um, and if you're looking for a good resource, you should check out Mozilla's page because they try to gather all the cool things and very useful tutorials. And what is cool is that um, you can find dev tools in Firefox dedicated for CSS Grid, so you can debug your grid out there. And if you're lost and if you don't know where to begin, I think that the, the very nice idea is to take existing website and try to rewrite it um, within, uh, with using CSS Grid. And I think that this example is really cool, um, and you should try working on it. But let's head to another features and to another cool stuff you can do. Um, clipping, which was already mentioned uh, here as well. It's cool to be one of the last one because you can actually reference to other talks. Um, so what is clip path? Uh, clip path is just like a shape boundary. Um, and please don't um, don't um, be um, don't think about deprecated clip uh, property because we've got new standardized version. Um, and what is clipping? Uh, for me, clipping is just like using a pair of scissors and chopping something with a 
with them uh, of, of the piece of paper. So everything which is inside the, the ellipse here is, um, just stays and is visible, or everything else is hidden. So as simple as that. And how we should apply this with CSS code, where we've got many possibilities, because we can use shapes, um, like circle. We can use more complicated shapes using polygon. But the coolest thing that I would like to um, mention is that we can use URL function. This is the, the, the latest one. And I'll be showing some code later on. Uh, and here, um, I prepared this like a simple example. I was very inspired by colleges, and I think that colleges are like um, having their moment of glory in web design right now. Um, and as you can see, there is a like a layer um, that the splash of water are like beneath the the whole layout. Um, and let's find out how it actually it's done. I don't know whether it's working. Maybe I should. Oh. It was working, I guess. Or not. Yes, it works. So if I comment out um, the clip path, you will see. Well, it, it doesn't work. I don't know why. It works. So, oh, it's lagged on my computer. <laughs> okay, so I should look at there. Um, so when you comment, uh, you'll see the, the whole div, um, which has just a background. And it's pretty easy to do. Um, and the clip path is applied using SVG mask, uh, using SVG path. Um, and it's also, there's also applied background attachment, so it makes the, this feeling that, um, that it's like attached somewhere, and I think it's, it's really cool. So how it is done, um, we need uh, SVG path prepared in a vector image software. We can use Illustrator, but maybe you have different uh, preferences like Enscape. Um, so we just basically copy the shape, paste it to your HTML document, and we need to edit it a little bit. So we actually um, paste the, the path that is here um, within the def, def tag. So def, def stands for definition, and it means that the, the shape won't be generated on the page, um, but the, your browser will know what is that. Um, and later, we just need to reference to it using CSS. So simple as that. And the very exciting news is that Firefox, uh, the later version of Firefox, is going to support basic shapes for a clip path. And you know, so people might be worried that these things that I'm showing now are not very good supported, or at least are not supported by all of the browsers. But good things are happening. And if you're just afraid of experimenting, you shouldn't be. <laughs> So heading to um, another thing connected with clipping, it's cutting out parts of the image. So let's see the example. As you can see, there are the levitating um, plants. And here, if you comment out the, the clip path, you will see the whole image. So actually, what is done here is that I just added the full image and prepared a path that is just clipping it from the image. So Let's see. We need two files, the JPEG and SVG. Of course, yeah, we need to spend, spend some time or as a designer to cut it out. Um, but it's really worth it. I'll prove you why. Um, so this is the code. And basically, it doesn't differ from the version before. We've got SVG that it's uh, defined in HTML document. And we just apply it to CSS. And you start thinking, OK, why we are doing it? Like, what's the point? What's the fuss about it? Um, let me show you this. So this is the answer. We've got JPEG and PNG, and you can just compare the sizes. Um, in this example, JPEG is what you've already seen, and PNG is just a file that has cut it out, um, that, that the plants are cut it out from the image. So it's six, so PNG weighs six times more. It's six times. I can see time on your faces. I'm really disappointed <laughs> right now because it's meant to be like my yay moment. Uh, but I really like it. And well, uh, the first time when I like invented this method at cutting out elements, um, I thought that maybe I'm insane because people will use Photoshop anyway. 
Uh, but I found a this article by Chris Coyer, and I think this is a confirmation that good things are happening, and maybe one day you'll use this method uh, in the production. Okay, so heading now to masking. So masking is another attractive feature, and it helps us to build more creative layouts on the web. Um, and actually, um, it just shows a given part of the uh, image uh, well, and hiding the others. So it looks like clipping, but it's not. I will tell you why. Um, so we can use um, URL function. Uh, using image, uh, we can use gradients, and you we can use SVG as well. Um, but I would like to focus more, more on the last one, because Firefox and IE support the only last one. So it's good to know about it. Um, and very important thing is that you need to use vendor prefixes to make it work. Just don't forget about it. And the cool thing about masking is that we have many properties that actually um, already have implemented for, um, for the background. So we've got mask size, repeat, mask size, mask repeat, and we can do crazy things with this. Um, and the cool thing about masking is that we can use raster images and we can have uh, transparency. So here, just for the, to a simple div, I applied GIF files. A GIF file, which is, I think, cool. I also applied blend mode. This is why the, the, the image is uh, black and white. Um, and as you can see on the, on the, very, like, on the top of the splash, um, it, it, like, it's faded. So the opacity, um, um, like, there, there's this transparency effect. And I think it's really, really cool. OK, so time now for explaining what is the difference between clipping and masking. So remember that clip for clipping, we always use vectors. And for masking, um, it's more often to use images. Uh, so if you'd like to have this partial transparency effect, go for masking. And if you'd like to have uh, crisp edges, perfect display, um, I would go for vectors uh, and using clipping. Um, unfortunately, um, um, CSS masking, uh, Clipping are not very widely supported, so always remember to check it. OK, so going to shave outside. So who has said that text containers need to be um, rectangular? I think that we need to try to step out of the boxes of our comfort zone, literally, and discover new forms of shapes. And we can do this with shape outside. And of course, there is equivalent um, to this called shape inside, but I'll be more focusing on shape outside. So we can just use this as this to CSS. We add cast, uh, shape outside with circle when you can apply the custom value. Uh, but we can also have polygon inset, so similar things are still clipping. Um, and another thing is that we've got URL function, which is very exciting. So here's the example I prepared for you. As you can see, there is a Q letter, and the content flows the Q letter. Um, and there are also splashes of gold paint. You can see here that I was very inspired by fashion magazines. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really cool effect. So let's see how it is done. Well, it's very important here that um, you have to also uh, remember about adding it will be shown in a minute, yeah, about uh, masking, because um, the shape property does not change anything about your element. Um, it means that any borders or background images will not adapt um, to the shape uh, on the created element on the left. So you need to remember about masking. Um, and this is it. So basically, if you want to create something similar on your project or a page, you have to remember that uh, shape outside only works for floated uh, elements. So it has to, um, it has to have float property. Um, either height or width have to be defined, because shape outside will create a coordinate system. So uh, without height or width, uh, the, um, the shape won't be set. So it's very important about, uh, about uh, adding those values. Uh, you can use background or background image, as I, uh, as I did in the previous example. Um, we've got masking, so mask image, just to cut out the, the shape. 
the, the, the Q letter, and we've got shape outside that actually defines how the content will flow. And if you uh, load the HTML file from your file system, uh, rather than from a web browser, you'll see something like that. So, well, you, you, what is that? Um, it's course. Course, well, it's emergency and in such moment I feel like a designer because I had no idea what's course. Um, so, course is cross origin resource sharing for all of you who doesn't know, but probably most of you do. Um, so, oops, sorry, it's not stuck. Oh my God, going. Wrong button. So um, if you want to uh, skip this problem, uh, the better, the best way is to load your page via localhost or put it uh, on your web server because shape outside values respect course, no matter what it means. Okay, so we're heading now to SVG, which is pretty cool and. Frankly speaking, I can't imagine today's web without SVG. Um, so it stands for uh, Scalable Vector Graphics, which we all know, and it just answers all our, our concerns regarding responsive web design and thousands of different devices, and it generals, uh, generates a uh, clear and crisp display. Um, but actually, we can do crazy things with SVG thinking about text, because and SVG text remain text, so it's uh, selectable, as you can see here on example. Um, it's searchable and it's accessible, the most important thing. Um, and I can't see many things like this on the web, and I don't know why, because it's fun. Um, so basically, when you create SVG and like this wavy path in Illustrator, you just copy it and paste to your HTML document. Of course, you can optimize it to um, have the code more um, let's say clean. Um, and here in, in blue, you can see the text that is displayed. So you can edit this, you can do crazy stuff out there. Um, and fortunately, I found one page that, that uses this, and I really like the, the effect, and it's SVG, and the text is on the circle. And it's really fun. And I wouldn't be myself if I um, didn't mention chaos. So uh, let's make some noise and distortion is welcome. So 80s and 90s are in, in web designs are back. The glitch, so aesthetics of errors and failures and jamming is a very popular design trend this year. And we want to have this on the web as well. So my huge inspiration is uh, one girl from Poland, she's called Martina, and she does these amazing things um, on her Instagram, which is called Pretty Ugly Project, and I totally agree with the name because it's kind of pretty, kind of ugly, but this is, it's all about glitches and, and this kind of design trend. And I was wondering, well, well whether do we have any website that use it? Uh, yes, we do. So I found kind of serious website about architects, but they apply this um, this amazing effect of uh, skewed text of different perspective. Um, and I decided to look for it, how actually we can do this. And I found a code pen made by uh, James. Um, and if you're really interested, how is it done? You should visit this link. I'll show the presentation later. Um, and it is done only with CSS, so this is very exciting. And you don't need to dig, to, to dig deeper for, any, for more inspirations connected with uh, this aesthetics, so distortions and errors, uh, because I really like the branding of, of this conference, and I hope that you know this page. And I would really like to congratulate Shishka for designing this amazing stuff, and I'm happy that organizers weren't afraid of um, of choosing this, this type of branding. Uh, and you can see that on the batch, we've got the checkered um, pattern, which is connected with transparency, maybe. So uh, with transparency and illustrate it in Photoshop uh, very often. So um, I really like this concept. And we, oops, this not. Next one. And I really like also that the shapes are not regular. So um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And I really like the side. So I showed you a couple of examples what we can do to be more creative and to step out of our comfort zone. I showed you some inspiration, and I think that this is the time to work on more crazy ideas and just to forget about our constraints. Um, and yesterday, I spent almost whole day uh, at Hermitage, which is, by the way, awesome. Um, and I was looking at... Um, 
for instance, this painting. Um, and it turned out that this author uh, is called Henri Matisse, and he said a very clever thing, that creativity takes courage. I would like to encourage everyone to be more courageous and to be not to be afraid of um, taking new ideas and experimenting, uh, because creating a website can be fun, and um, I think that all depends on us. And it's not only the front-end developers who have to learn a lot, but also designers who should learn like what is their artistic medium and thinking about web right now. So if you are not designers, um, you should talk with the designers that you work with to show them this crazy stuff you can, you can do. And actually, how many designers we have here? OK, quite. Quite a lot. So I'm super proud of you um, that you came to CSS conference. Um, I'm very happy. Um, so while experimenting, don't forget about caniuse.com because we, of course, want to make our things accessible to everyone. Um, but at the same time, don't be afraid that some things are not supported because even if we deliver new experience for 20% of the user, it's still fine. And this is what actually Patrick showed you and said that if you raise the, the, the bag and if you report them, it's kind of getting popular um, and it's going to be uh, introduced pretty soon. So uh, I really recommend to, to just try and experiment. So don't forget about it. And to end, I've got a contest for you. Uh, I brought some stickers and temporary tattoos branded by the Awesomes. Um, and if you'd like to win them, you just have to answer this question. Uh, feel free to use my handle, but you can also use Peter's CSS conf. Um, so the question is that which CSS properties are necessary to achieve this effect? It's very similar to the one that I already showed you, so I hope that um, it won't be difficult for you. And um, thank you for your attention. I would like to really invite you to create a better web, more creative, and let's break the norm together. Thank you. OK, you're already there. Yes. Should I? Maybe I should. Whoa. OK. So I got a few questions from Twitter, okay. a couple from myself. OK. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Awkward Ooh. silence. Maybe I should tell the poem that I know in Russian. Just about sabaka. <laughs> sabaka is a great word. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe later. Um, uh, the um, uh, one one guy from the audience, Gleb, uh, asking a lot of questions. Thank you. Uh, he is suggesting that you're gonna love uh, one Russian site, very creative, like creative even too much. Oh, that's called that's awesome. uh, W O S. Okay. Was was. Okay. Voss, okay. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take, oh, yeah, woo -hoo. Are you the author of this uh, one? Or? Uh, no, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, I, know, I know designer, uh, Alexey Ivanovsky, okay. uh, who, 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 who's like, used to be like a chief of design on this uh, okay. project. Like, he's crazy enough, like, yeah, just, love, just like you, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love his ideas. And yeah, if you have any other uh, local inspiration, I would love yeah, to, yeah. To, to see it. So it's, uh, it's w-o-s.ru. So was project. Okay, I hope that everybody. Yeah, knows it's that. like. But Shishka, yeah, that does the amazing stuff as well. No, it's it's nothing compared to us. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But, no, it's you know, it's it's anyway, just, I just, it's just to, a different different gen yeah, genre. Just, yeah. To express my appreciation yeah, yeah. for this amazing. Uh, a question from Nikita: Is masking bad for performance in in a way that we have to use PNG instead of JPEG because of the transparency uh, and everything? Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, um, this is a good question because I forgot to tell that. Um, masking, um, like comparing masking to clipping, masking is more a uh, memory and computation consuming because it goes pixel by pixel. So yeah, so it's also to, to have this in mind. But in terms of performance and masking, well, I, I 
need to uh, repeat a, a vast uh, quote that um, I'm not a performance specialist. Uh, I'm a designer <laughs> right now. This is the moment. I'm a designer. Um, but yeah. No, no, no. We, we've, we've seen your code. Uh, so <laughs> too, that's too late for that. Oh, yeah. But PNG waits a lot. Yeah. So it's always a problem. So sometimes if you don't need this transparency effect, it's better to go with clipping and use SVG. Yeah. Yeah, there's also like some effects when you can uh, wrap your uh, JPEG with uh, SVG and have a mask. Exactly, and, yeah, exactly. Like this, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as a designer, what do you think about graceful decoration? Like you, you have some very great design in your head. Like you, you, you coded it yourself in in a recent browsers, and you open like not i6 but something like two years old, and you see that like uh, your shapes are not distorted. Text doesn't flow you, you, the way you want it to. What do, do you, what, what do you feel about uh, this kind of a uh, graceful de degradation? Well, uh, yeah, it's pretty sad that you you can't have everything on every browser. But yeah, as, as I also said, uh, you 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 should be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid of experimenting. And you know, in such cases, you just have to. There is a cool rule called support. Um, and if you're not like sure what 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 will happen, you can use support rules. So the browser will just skip the code, so skip the masking and clipping. So that's the solution. But yeah, you just always have to just look for the the best option for you. So but, yeah. So I wonder because like if it's Wikipedia, then it's content first. When it's yeah. something like landing page or like something like sh that should be really expressive yeah. and creative. I actually, you always have to have have in mind the medium that you're designing for the brand because you know you can't always go crazy, and this is the sad thing. But sometimes you know you have to think that maybe like more standard traditional design will be better. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, question from Jan: uh, How do you make decisions? Uh, whether to follow UX patterns or unleash your creativity. Uh, mm. Often they con contradict one another. Yes, sometimes, yeah, they are actually very often. It's a tough question. I think it all depends on the project, on the client, on how many users actually will uh, visit the site. Um, I think that sometimes it's just intuition. So I try to find like a golden balance, golden rule, and like the golden standard, and the balance between being very crazy and creative, and being just like um, just going in line with the US principles. So but, it, uh, it all depends. Yeah. Okay. But as a person, you you would, okay. you would you would rather design something mm. creative and crazy, or I, I follow like, really <laughs> really really nice yeah. reading style guide. I like doing crazy things, unfortunately. Okay. So I, I used to work as a UX junior developer, a uh, UX UX designer. Okay. But I quit this job. That was <laughs> Maybe too, this too is the reason. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it was quite like too boring for me. But yeah, I appreciate all UX designers, of course, because it's a tough work. Okay, and the last question for like for from Alexi: uh, Are there any other new specs uh, that encourage creativity? Something that we should look in, look into? Yeah, actually, uh, it was great that uh, Jing uh, she showed us Jen Simon Jen Simmons lab website mm -hmm. and like writing mode. I totally agree. That it's it can. Um, like unleash, unleash our creativity, and there is uh, you can, for example, use viewport uh, units, which is also cool. Um, yeah, masking, clipping. Uh, I really recommend to yeah to check out Jen Zimmons lab website because she she present presents their very cool ideas, and of course cold drops. Yeah, then there are many crazy stuff. And oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.